Welcome to Span Reads, not your typical rereads podcast, a 17 shard series where we reread Brandon Sanderson's works and are giant nerds about it. Unlike the traditional reread style, we won't be going through each book chapter by chapter, but instead looking at different themes within the series. We will be doing three episodes, reactions and retrospectives, character relationships, and then a third episode on lore. Similar to our Skyward Span Reads, we will be doing full spoilers for these episodes. As such, this is a warning to our viewers and listeners that there will be full spoilers for all Skyward novels, excluding Defiant, from this point forward. Today, we will be talking about the Skyward Flight novellas. Joining me is Jesse. Hello, I am Lady Lameness, and I wish to welcome you all to fall and have a happy Halloween. I have this cool little cauldron mug that says Witch's Brew. So this is coming out after the uh, equinox, so yes. all the solstice. I don't remember what it is. Equinox. It changes seasons in America. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> happy fall, everyone. Uh, <laughs> this comes out October 12th, so I think that's in very fitting. <laughs> I looked it up. It's the 22nd of August. Uh, because everyone knows you can just remember these things off Wait, the top of your head. No, it, no it's the 23rd of September. Ah, sorry. It's, I meant it's September. The I meant like the current month, not the last month. <laughs> Look, uh, we're, we're recording this early September, and I don't like that it's September. You know, I don't like it. Also joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm Weary Rider. <laughs> Eric. Hey, I'm Chaos. <laughs> and I'm me, your first Rainbow Rose. If you want a recap of what the Skyward Flight novellas are, you can watch Jess's uh, recap with the link there. Yeah, there's three of them, so I'll put them all in the description. I'll probably just put a card to the Sunreach one. But cool. Yeah, when I made them, it wasn't one book yet. They were individual yeah. novellas. Yes. Can, can I start with a hot take? I, sure. I'm a hot Skyward series take. Okay. okay. Skyward Flight <laughs> is the best in the series. Boom. You heard it here. I think I think I think I enjoyed these more than I enjoyed uh, like I enjoyed my reread of this more than I enjoyed my reread of Skyward. That doesn't mean Skyward like like Skyward is stressful, but these these are also stressful. So like th there's parts. It, it's not just like a fun romp all the time. But I, I think overall, these are solid. I think it also helps that like you kind of get three climaxes and it's pretty sweet. So, yeah, I have talked to Eric about this outside of the podcast. And I actually think I agree with this because like I love Skyward the book, but I have so many conflicted feelings now doing the reread of it with like the different expectations than when I first read it, that it just kind of doesn't hit the same for me. And it does kind of lower my enjoyment. Whereas like when these came out, we knew where the series was going. Like Psychonic was out by this point. So we knew what was happening with Spencer. We like were getting what was happening with everyone else, which is kind of what I wanted from the beginning. So rereading them, I got just as much enjoyment as the first time compared to reading Skyward again. And it was just like, I felt kind of jaded. <laughs> 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 Whereas rereading this, I was like, these are great. I think that I did enjoy them a little bit more myself. Um, just because I love the character, like the way the characters play off of each other. It's, it's, it's good banter all the time. It's just like, it's stellar. I, you know, I'm probably going to put them as my favorite, too. Wow. So not Whoa. a hot take. Because, like, I, I do like the direction the series went. Yeah. Like, it, it was always, like, Spencer and Mbot and weird psychotic stuff, which is the story we get. But I all, I'm also Star Trek, Star Wars fan. I love going new places. And we went new places. <laughs> And that's fun. But we go new places in Starsight and Cytonic as well. So it's different, though, in here. Like, but like we go to Tolkien elves living on giant trees in a gas giant. And like, it's cool. That's cool. It's, it's, yeah. super, it, it's cool. Definitely looking at like Cytonic versus these, it kind of felt to me like Cytonic 
delved so much more into kind of the magic of the series, right? Like we got so much more on Cytonics. And yeah, we were in the nowhere and it was a new place and we got to explore that. But that didn't feel super sci-fi to me. It felt much more like this is a fantasy story that we're following the magic for. Whereas these two yeah. fellas gave me so much more of the intergalactic mm -hmm. space organizations, giant galaxy wide fights and stuff that I would expect from like a sci-fi series. So the novellas really stood out to me as giving more of that sci-fi element versus Cytonic giving more of the fantasy element. That's fair. I would say that these feel a lot more like Skyward, but also dealing with the greater intergalactic conflict, whereas Starsight and Cytonic definitely feel like there's a different tone in them compared with Skyward, whereas this, it feels like Skyward. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I was just thinking about this. Overall, like the arc of... The Skyward series, like it, it's Spencer's story, and it's very focused on the Delvers, which Delvers aren't important to these three novellas. Yeah. So, like, there is that these are, exist outside of that the main arc of the series, and kind of support it in a really nice way that harkens back to what we got in the first book. I have maybe a hot take going off that, though I don't know how much this is actually a hot take anymore. But because um, Starsight sets up two different villains, like you have the Delvers, you have the superiority, and Cytonic deals with the Delvers, like something has to deal with the superiority. And so often, like a novella is there to like give a little bit extra, but it's not like integral to the story, right? These, I think, are integral to the story. I think there needs to be a rebranding where like Cytonic and Skyward Flight are like part one, part two of the third book in this series. Yeah. Because you really, I, I like, I do not think that the fourth book is going to make any sense if you just read Cytonic and don't read these. Like yeah. it's probably going to give some overview, but that feels like it's going to be very unfulfilling if it's just oh here's a bunch of stuff that happened that you didn't read and all this stuff changed and you just have to accept it now yeah. it's like yeah the trinus now can travel the galaxy i'm like that's a big <laughs> thing that happens <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, Jorgen's now yeah, Admiral, happens. like like getting to the end of Cytonic, you want to know how those things happened. And imagine if you just moved on without like a proper explanation. Yeah. I, I remember because what they did was they put Sunreach, Redon, then Cytonic, then Evershore. Uh, and so to like, ooh, you can answer it in Evershore. But yeah, it's going to be interesting seeing how Defiant like sort of deals with both superiority stuff and Delver stuff and mixes all it together because that's that 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 could go poorly maybe but uh so we'll we'll, we'll need to see i think you gotta read this after star sight i think this the way we're doing span reads is the correct reading order i think uh, yeah i i do agree with that I wanted to go back to jesse's point of like this being like integral because i want to say early on Brandon spoke about how like Cytonic was supposed to be a split POV yes. with Spencer mm -hmm. and like yeah. Jorgen. I, 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 I don't know if he ever so. said the second POV. It would have been Jorgen. But then it's like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, it was going to yeah. be Jorgen. Where I think we were going to get a lot of this stuff. And then like when he was writing Cytonic, it's like, nah, like this needs to be like fully focused on Spencer. It's like we got a little few tidbits of Jorgen in the interludes, but the book was Spencer. So yeah. I think with that choice being made, it's like we that's why we got the novella. There's this whole other aspect of the story is like we need to get out. Yeah. 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 We have to tell this other side of the story. Yeah. And with how much happens in the novellas, this is probably the correct call to make them their own books and just instead of 
trying to squish everything <laughs> into Cytonic. Because, like, Brandy could have done it and just made a book that was twice as big as any other Skyward mm-hmm. book. But that does kind of cause other problems for people who are reading the series and expecting a book of a certain size and then get something double that size. Like, not everyone's actually into that, even though we're, of course, in the fandom that are like, give us more. (laughs) The thing is, is if they put it as one book, like, admittedly, you could cut some traveling, (laughs) you could cut some pirate stuff, you could do that with Cytonic. You, 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 You just could, right? But I feel like if this was the same, like you'd probably like cut a lot of uh, Sunreach stuff like Mm -hmm. that. That's probably kind of more invented because of the novellas, because now there's space to do it. But Mm -hmm. I would worry that the Jorgen plot line felt like the A plot, (laughs) which is maybe not what Brandon wants. And I think there's a would have been a big like tone problem. Yes. Yeah. yeah like, yes. Like they're very different plot lines. We're mm-hmm. getting into, like we said, we were. We're. This is full spoilers for everything. We're talking about Cytonic. We, we have to compare but, them. Yeah. There's a reason we yeah. have to do it this yeah, way. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, because like Cytonic is so focused on like Spensa, like and the danger of forgetting, and that's just. I don't think that would jive well with this whole arc in the same book it's a theme problem right like it's Mm -hmm. it's too disconnected yeah i agree i actually disagree with that i think it could be made to work in a comparison of spencer's going through this um journey of forgetting and becoming complacent and she just wants to rest and everyone else is fighting for their lives and using that as a juxtaposition on each other so that when spencer finally comes to her decision at the end of cytonic you could kind of pull them in together where she knows that she has to go back to what we've been seeing this entire book Mm. which is horrendous for everyone else and i think Personally, I think that that would have made it a lot more heart-wrenching to have had to watch the horror of the defiance through the whole thing and then watch Spencer make that decision to go back to the kind of awful life in a way that is war versus being able to just set down the load and rest in the nowhere. So I think it could have worked. Not currently as it is. I don't think you could just splice the books together. They would have to be rewritten to to an extent. But I think you could play them off each other. That, that's that's definitely interesting. As much as the theoretical joint book seems like that would just be a better Cytonic with less filler, I don't think these novellas had filler. Like th- there were definitely some mm. slower parts where we we were doing a lot of fun character stuff but i think that character stuff was like really good like i think Mm -hmm. if anything there was a lot of slug training but also we use the slug so much that we kind of need that as well so like it's it's tricky but i'm really glad that these novellas had a chance to really breathe and shine Mm -hmm. speaking of that we have made a critical error what's that and that we haven't mentioned Jancy being the right author yeah. of these oh, yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. Because yes, yeah. Jancy is amazing and we love Jancy her. Jancy is yes. amazing. Shout out to Jancy. You can look. I'll put a card for our interview with uh, Jancy. She, she, she wrote these. Yeah. Brandon didn't yeah. do that much. <laughs> All things considered. Yeah. My understanding is Jancy wrote basically the entire thing and then it was a back and forth in terms of editing with brandon instead of like brandon also writing parts so really like there's still brandon's books as well but Mm -hmm. jancy is the writer of these books and she did such an incredible job i think like picking up the right tones and the characters and matching it to what we've had before considering she was writing them from scratch and then giving them to brandon Mm -hmm. yeah and like Brennan was kind of like involved with like ideas and like whenever she's like, I need a cool thing. She would go to Brennan. He would give her a cool thing. It's like, yes, giants or something like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But like, what's nice about it is that like Skyward was always supposed to be like a co-written thing between the two of them. 
Like that, that was the original oh. plan. And then oh. Brandon was writing the apocalypse card and it didn't work. And he's like, I need to write a thing oh, so for my YA it. publisher. So he's like, I need to bring forward Skyward to now. And so, and so like the co-writing thing, like timing wise didn't work out then. So it was nice that like we got to this and Brandon's like, we need these novellas. Hey, Jancy, do you want to write these novellas? Yeah. It, Jancy, if you're that. listening, best book in the series. Boom. This one. We we'll love see how you, Jancy. <laughs> yeah. And like, he's the one that picked like the three viewpoints, hmm. which like Jorgen originally wasn't on the table and neither was Alanik. But <laughs> thank you, Jancy, for convincing Brandon that you needed these characters. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can see why Brandon's like, ah, but Jorgen, like, ah, that, that could lead to issues. Like, that's understandable. I am kind of surprised that Jorgen was up in the air because he seems like the really obvious choice based on, like, kind of what we were all expecting when we thought Cytonic was going to be a GOP or mm. B, that mm. it was going to be Spencer and Jorgen. So to me, it seemed really obvious that Jorgen was going to be one of the mm. POV characters for the novellas. So that... That's just wild to me, and I'm so glad we got Jorgen's POV because Evershaw was incredible. Yeah, we'll talk about it in characters <laughs> next week. But man, because like, like Jorgen's so important in all these books, right? Like he's the Cytonic yeah. telling the slugs yeah. to to go places, right? So like he's super integral. But like just getting Jorgen's POV right after Redon, it's like, oh yeah, we're getting to the yeah. juiciest part of this. Yes. And oh, it's so delicious. I love it. It's like stab you in the heart and twist, and it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that I read them in a point or in a place where I didn't have to wait for them to come out. Mm. Uh, e e yeah, because uh, yeah. yeah. Redon has quite yeah. the, uh, we got some stuff to do, right? Yeah. And having to wait between the end of Redon with the cliffhanger and the start of Evershore, that would have hurt. Like yeah. that, I would have hurt so much with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Jancy did really well to make FM feel very important. Uh, like Sun mm, Sunreach yeah. is the weakest of them, I think. I still actually really enjoyed Sunreach, to be clear. Like, mm -hmm. I think it started stellar just with the Delver attack. Like, that's exactly what I want. And it just felt like Skyward again, where Starsight felt less like it. So I loved that. But I know Jancy was having difficulty, like, getting FM to sort of be the hero type thing for mm -hmm. that one but she was also very important and fm and jorgen's relationship was really important sunreach really sets up the other novellas really well mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah really well done and not to get into it too much because i know we'll talk about it next week with yeah. the characters but the work that jancy puts in with sunreach i think really makes fm blossom when she gets to evershore yeah. and yeah. Just like ties her character together with what we got in Skyward so well. Whereas kind of before we got that, we got a bit of FM and then it kind of disappeared. Um, like her ties to the, the can't remember what they were called. The disputers, yeah. And like I, I just loved what Jancy did to bring back that empathy and tie it back in to her caring. Yeah. And, and she she is a much better diplomat than everyone else. <laughs> to be fair, they have no diplomat, so that's not a high bar. Low bar. <laughs> it's yeah. a really low bar for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but someone's gonna start. Yep. I guess in a way you could say that the, the National Assembly were the diplomats in <clears throat> Redon, and uh yeah, FM's much better. Uh, at the role, I would say. It's understandable what the assembly was trying to do. Yeah, the, the superiority, not good, very bad. And I think there's a really interesting parallel that is unintended, but jumps out to me pretty starkly between the assembly want peace because they've been at war for so long and they just want to be able to set down that load they're carrying 
and not have to continue being on the edge of destruction all the time. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Spencer in the nowhere, basically going through the exact mm-hmm. same conundrum. And we get completely different outcomes based on their decisions. And I don't think that's at all intended, but I thought that was such a good parallel between the two stories. Yeah. I like that. What are people's favorite novella of these three? I mean, it's ever sure, obviously. Yeah. I do really love Read On because I love the setting of Read On. Like, that's a very cool, like, visual. And, like, I let's go back there in Skyward Legacy or, like, Defiant and, like, just spend a whole book there. Like, that place is cool. But Evershore is just really, really good. Yeah. Was that your favorite in your first read as well? I think so. Do you have a least favorite? It's technically Sunreach, but not because Sunreach is bad. It's yeah, just like, yeah. It's it has bad. less, it's like, it's really set good. up, and it, like, it has less of the cool stuff I, that the other two have. There's an initial learning curve to read on, because you're like, oh, okay. Well, once we get Skyward Flight in Read On, it's there's like huge amounts of combat and stuff happening. And I have trouble exactly remembering what's in Read On, especially reading all these back to back over a day and a half, which is what I did. It, because it's just like, wow, this is this this is great. I'm just reading along, right? But I, I do think Evershore is the best of them, but like Sunreach is good. Redon really builds on that and really has a killer climax, I think. And like both on Redon with uh, getting the platform, blowing up the cannon, love that. And, you know, killing Jorgen's mom, good. But Ever Evershore is just, it has such a massive climax that I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> we have massive planet-wide battle uh and jorgen's just telepathically controlling the battle basically and giving orders and i'm like i love that it's good to try disappearing teleport a planet teleport a planet they teleport a planet get all yeah. the slugs to help to yeah. come in yeah it's 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 like fine speaks on their behalf i'm like oh yes so god it's such an absurdly wide scale climax that mm-hmm. both is great in its own novella, like it's its own arc, but also completes the arc of the Skyward novellas as a whole and get gives conclusions for everyone. Evershore, love it. Evershore, I would say, is definitely my favorite now. Initially, I think I was just overwhelmed with how much was actually in the ending. Like there was so much and it just, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, not to go into any details, but like the end of Earthbringer where it just keeps going and never (laughs) stops. And it's just exhausting to read. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I felt with um, Evershore initially. Whereas now that I know like kind of what's going to happen, like, yeah, this is amazing. This is so good. I can't wait to like get, through it all yeah. but i think initially my my favorite was sunreach because i was just pulled in by the fm rig relationship so hard it's really good yeah like it, I, it I has a good the romance is kind of weak but yeah the romance in it is just yeah. so good <laughs> number one clue this was not written by brandon <laughs> <laughs> believable that teenage romance yeah True. T- 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 yeah. Sad, yeah. True. I was gonna say Jorgen's feelings about Spencer are very <laughs> realistic, but Chancy wrote them. So. <laughs> so it's like, oh right, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Radin's great, and like he has written some good romances <laughs> more recently. He's getting in his better. Career. Yeah. Like he he's continually he's improving. improving. Jancy is a better romance writer than Brandon. Yeah. She's yeah. Jancy is a known romance writer as yes. well. Like that that's just like one of her niches. So it's not surprising that like she did this so well. I have so many thoughts, but I have to hold them till the I next know, episode. I know. <laughs> um I, I will say with Sunreach, I, I did still like its conclusion with like FM's fear of losing people. And that like did still like appear a lot mm-hmm. in the later ones. So Mm-hmm. And I really liked seeing Skyward Five from like Alanique's perspective. I really liked that and integrating that in. I I, I dug it. 
It's good. I, I found Alani. She's like, oh, like humans are like, oh, like how did she put it? Whenever like the topic of relationship yes. comes up and like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, it's not that like humans are like uncomfortable with this. I was like, it's that they're teenagers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Teenagers are uncomfortable with this. It's, it's amazing. The species even survived. <laughs> so good. The, the humor. Like, so good. Yeah, it's like yeah. you were raised by your parents. I'm like, that's weird. I mean, like being raised by your grandparents, like it makes sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Particularly if your parents are going out to work or stuff, like that mm-hmm. does yeah, yeah. make a lot of sense. Y- 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 I mean, yeah. To be fair, there's a history of both parents being in the military. So having a family member step up and be the one to raise them, even the, um, on Earth. Yeah. Makes mm-hmm. sense. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens to an extent on detritus as well. Like, there's a lot of people who seem to have both parents in the military. And if they die, then who's going to take care of the kid? So, like, if there is a grandparent, like, Spencer's got um, a grandmother. Presumably, if, like, her dad and her mom died for some reason, like, grand grand would take care of her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I think it's more grandparents are the default yeah. on Read On. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah, it happens on, like, Earth in, like, detritus, Mm. but it's because the parents aren't there to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like when you take it, like, when children are raised by a nanny instead of their parents, except the nanny happens to be family. I love the humor and banter in these, Mm -hmm. but I'm also really impressed that Jancy made the space combat feel stressful. Like, like legitimately stressful. Mm. I I think... Mm -hmm. Spensa is just way too good, even without Mbot. She she's way too overpowered. That it was nice to have space battles that gave that sense of stress that Skyward had, mm-hmm. and like that real fear of losing people, which I think for the most part, Star Sight and Cytonic don't have. Cytonic at the very end, yeah. And I think I was worried that people would die in Star Sight, but then they didn't. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no one died. Yeah. Literally, no one died. But you know, hey. whereas this, though we didn't have a big character death, the the stakes felt very real. Yeah. Well, oh, well, we killed Jorgen's mom. I, I mean, a, a death of none Skyward <laughs> fight. That's what I'm saying, right? Like, it, yeah. it's not like Skyward in that sense, where like we're we're just murdering people in the, the fight here. That didn't happen. Yeah, and I think also because of the fact that. These are novellas, and a lot of people are going to see them side books to Cytonic and not potentially read them. We can't really kill off any of these characters, <laughs> which is if True. you only read Cytonic and then you get to Defiant, and it's like, oh yeah, guys, Arturo is dead now. It's like that's really disappointing. Like, I actually think when um True. when Cytonic came out, people kept questioning because Jorgen was Admiral. It's like, where's Cobb? Yeah, like he was dead. Was Cobb killed off screen? Yes, yes. And people were <laughs> people like, oh were my god. furious. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, it, that's a very good point, Jess. I like that. You, you can't kill character, main characters off screen mm-hmm. in a novella. You can't do that. Yeah. But I think Jancy did You can just kill their parents. At- yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> those characters don't matter. They're that parents much. in a YA novel. They're toast. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they have to die. It's it's surprising they've lasted this long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spencer's mom, you're unnamed. You're next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please name her first. Actually, no. If she dies, then we'll have to get her name for like a funeral or something. True. Wouldn't that be funny if that's <laughs> the only time we get her name is in her funeral scene? We oh. can move her out of the unnamed mother's club on the copper mind into the dead mother's club on the copper mind. <laughs> the Venn diagram of that, there's a lot of overlap. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost just one circle. <laughs> I do think Jancy did well, though, in kind of combining the feeling of Starsight with the feeling of Skyward. Like, there mm. is more tension, I would say, in the um, Skyward flight novellas, but it's not quite to the level of Skyward. Like, I, I, well, I didn't feel as hopeless as I did during Skyward that just... Mm-hmm. Everything was terrible. People are going to die left, right, and center. Like, I felt the tension and I was worried during the fights for people, but I never felt that kind of despair that people definitely would die. Like, I think Jancy did tone it down a bit. So it did 
match Starside a little bit more in terms of tone. I don't know if any of that made sense, but it no. makes sense in my brain. Yeah, it makes, makes perfect sense. sense. I think mm -hmm. it, it, going off what we've talked about previously, like in Skyward, there's just that big knowledge gap. And now like mm -hmm. like a knowledge and power differential between mm -hmm. the humans and the Krell. Whereas here, like they have tools to fight back. And so that that inherently mm -hmm. sort of like, well, I mean, maybe we could get to like, maybe we could get to the control room and maybe we could do something. Maybe uh, like there's at least mm -hmm. a hope rather than just like, oh, yeah, we're we're going to be destroyed. <laughs> Have fun with yeah, because like I think a full series of like every book being like Skyward was like it would have been too much. Mm -hmm. But I think the jump between Skyward and Star Sight was too abrupt. It might have been better for like that to have slowly been dialed down. Like as like the humans are figuring things out. We're building momentum. We're getting back hope that like the books themselves get more hopeful. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. And really, this feels more like the true sequel to Skyward in a way, tonally. Like it, mm. it, yeah, it has the intergalactic politics of aliens, which is very cool. And admittedly, this is written in a way where, you know, you have to have read Star Sight. That's fine. But I feel like you could have had a story like this be the sequel to Skyward and it wouldn't have been quite so jarring. Um, yeah. Where it's just like, it's an adventure where like, like you totally could have done book two of just like going to read on. Like that, that could have, that could have happened. You wouldn't have much Delver stuff, I guess, but mm -hmm. he could have made it work. So this felt more natural with the progression of humanity rather than I'm going somewhere totally different. Bye guys. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I, I think I was about to say part of the issue, but I don't think it's an issue per se. Part of like the reality of the situation is like Brandon is going to Brandon. Like he has like the idea, like he wants to go in his head, and that's the direction he's gonna go. And he doesn't have the benefit of having like the books written all at, at once. So yes. you can see like, okay, like this. Like he's writing things one book at a time. Yeah. So you can't, it's harder to course correct. Mm -hmm. mm. That it's going to be really nice in era three, him rewriting, uh, writing the whole thing where he yes. can do that. Because I think we found like in this series, there's a little bit of series weirdness. And I think Stormlight has a similar issue. Like, I don't think it's mm. as bad, but there's definitely yeah. like, if you could rewrite these books, you could have made this a little smoother probably yeah. like it's still really good yeah oh. i'm rereading wave kings at the moment and like knowing where it goes wave kings feels so different to like mm -hmm. rhythm of war like they they're the same series but they feel very different book wise yeah yeah and i think that just gets into it going back to what jesse was saying earlier where like there is a version of like a combined book where all of this is integrated, like Brandon could write that. However, how long would that take to yeah. like write and revise until it worked? This series is a lower priority than Stormlight. If mm -hmm. he's going to spend revision, yeah. he's going to do it on Stormlight and Mistborn stuff. And that's the right call. Let's be honest. Yeah. It is. At, at a certain point, he's like this, like you, you have to reach a point of like, this is good enough. Like, could I make this better? Yes. This is, I am content with what I've written. You yeah. can't put out as much as Brandon does without being like, okay, you know, perfection is the enemy of good. This is good. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> you know, like people, some people aren't going to like it. Pat Rothfuss. Uh, yeah. No. Well, yeah. I saw a thing the other day that was actually talking about sewing. Um, mm -hmm. And it was saying that, you can look at every single garment you ever make and you will always find flaws. At some point, you just need to accept that it won't be perfect. That doesn't mean that it won't be really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfection doesn't exist. Yeah. But these novellas are pretty good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. If anything, I think Jancy's regret is, man, I wish I had even more space to put more stuff in. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. I think her biggest regret is forgetting that Arturo's parents are also yeah. an AL, <laughs> National die. Assembly leaders. It's like yeah. the whole assembly didn't 
wasn't on the yeah, ship. Just half like, of they them. They only sent like half. So presumably Arturo's parents are dead. <laughs> Never comes up. <laughs> Never comes up. To, to be fair, I don't think most of us remember that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. It still kind of works because we go straight into Jorgen's POB and he is kind of centered on himself. And I think that that's very understandable that he's not kind of thinking of his friend who might also be in a situation because he's currently trying to get alliances, lead the DDF, and also uh, bury his grief because who talks about their feelings nowadays? Mm -hmm. We're defiant. We don't talk about our grief. Come on. <laughs> let's, be, let's be real. Toxic masculinity. It is toxic masculinity, the society. Yeah. So for uh final thought before we wrap up, what are you guys' favorites and least favorite moments to of the series or of the books? I think my favorites are probably just the slugs in general. I don't have a favorites moment. I just have a favorite aspect, which is the slugs and how cute they are. They're very cute. Least favorite me? I don't nothing stands out as like a least favorite like I read it and went, oh, this is so bad. Having to wait for the next, for the resolution to everything. What about you guys? My, uh, all of my notes were just like, wow, I really like this. And I really like this as well. So there's so much good. Man. Like, I love detritus jumping. It's just such a, like that, that entire, it's like a half the novella but of Evershore, but man, that entire battle is just crazy and just everything comes together. I love it. One of my favorite ropes is like the like arrival of reinforcements that you weren't necessarily expecting. Yeah. It's hell like yeah. um in Lord of the Rings. Oh like, yeah. The oh, the um, rubber yeah. Uh, Dude, like the um at, at the Battle of Helm's Deep, uh -huh. Gandalf arrives with the here. Um, it's Avengers assemble at Endgame, where yep. there's like everybody's there. It, it's that's one and, of like, the best tropes, though. <laughs> it, it it it's such a great trope, and we kind of get that a couple times in here. Like we get that with like the arrival of all the slugs of like asking them for help and then like they showing up in force like fine like speaking on behalf on their behalf like that's great we get that with like the kids in cytonics yeah. getting rescued yes. and coming in to help and we get that with detritus itself just appearing above and it's like other favorite lines like uh yeah like can you please move your planet it's gonna rip us apart and like <laughs> like <laughs> that'd be that'd be really great if you could you know, just just like park it yeah, just like, a little bit further <laughs> <laughs> i love yeah. the line immediately afterwards as well when they're like wait the planet it has some gravity thing the planet has grav caps <laughs> and they're just stunned <laughs> No. yeah or it's like it's like oh don't worry about it like the tritus has like things that's like it's not enough please move your plane <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not great we're currently going to drown <laughs> all of that's so good ian and i think that's why the ending of evershort is so good because it's hopeless and it's like more reinforcements more reinforcements yeah, mm. yeah. it's okay do you have a least favorite moment ian i mean that is my favorite my least favorite moment I don't, I can't think of anything. Nothing stands out as like a yeah. thing I specifically no. dislike. No. Oh, I love FM and Rig as well. I, I really yeah. like it. They're really good. Yeah, they're cute. Yeah. I have a couple of things that are kind of my favorite, like FM and Rig, definitely hands down. I love their relationship so much. And at, like Jorgen's pain, just all of it, just making him sad i loved being in his head and dealing with his grief and so like that scene where he's sitting in the meeting hall and he's literally having a panic attack to the point that he throws mind blades at everybody yeah. and it works and just, it, it works explodes. and i think boom, boom slugs there and boom slugs just like boom <laughs> boom <laughs> so cute but hands down you guys have already mentioned it the best scene, I think, in the entire novellas is the Tritus jumping. Like, you know it's going to happen if you've already read Cytonic, because you know that Detritus is in orbit around Evershore. And it is still such an incredible moment that just... 
was so good and like topped everything else in the books for me. I, I, I knew it was going to happen and that didn't detract at all. And I think that is a sign of incredible writing when you can still give that feeling, even if someone knows what's going to happen. True. Yeah. We My all- least favorite moment, though, I will say is also from the Battle at Avishore and is to do with the Life Buster, because I was so excited when there was a Life Buster, because that was such a big thing in uh, Skyward, right? They, they were terrified of them. And it's completely trivial. <laughs> they just get rid of it immediately using the exact same technique and... I just wish there was like a little bit more to it and it was a little bit more dangerous and they had to do a little bit more to get rid of it. I don't know. It just kind of seemed to be there and then it was gone. Mm. And I was kind of disappointed by that because I was so excited when it first turned off. I feel like this is a thing I talked about in our like original like Evershore reactions. It definitely did. (laughs) Where it's like, I like that. Because I, I like that it shows like there was this big problem and it was such a scary thing to them in Skyward, but they figured out how to deal with it. So it's like it's no longer as scary because they they have a solution. Like they know what to do and they did it in video games. This is the metaphor I use. And as I like I really like this metaphor, like the first boss or like an early game boss, like shows up later in the game, like as a mini boss or even just as a regular enemy. And it helps show like how much like you've grown as a character that like this thing that was so big and scary isn't so scary anymore. I think I would have liked it if it was just like a little bit more than what it was. Like, I I see what you're saying. I think I would have liked exactly what you're saying if there was just a little bit more to it. But it just it just seemed to turn up and that it was gone. Just a little bit more in the middle. That's all I wanted. That's, that's the only complaint I think I have about the entire like three novellas. Everything else was fantastic. Thank you for watching. You can find us at 17thchar.com for all the news, discussion, theories, and fun you could ever want. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud. You can leave us a review on iTunes. You can subscribe on YouTube. And you can also support us on Patreon. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.